can't. I, we can't account. I think it, football players, you just you just never know. Throw health to the side. What's the biggest area of weakness and strength for for Brock Purdy for this year? What's the biggest area of strength or weaknesses? So what are the biggest areas of strengths and weaknesses? To me, I think his feel for the game is really, really, really good. good. Really, really good. Really good. Clearly his decisiveness, but I, I felt like as the season was progressing, you did see him be a little hesitant, especially in the first half of games when defenses were more sophisticated. Listen. Um, I think we make too much of arm strength, but there is something to be said. When I watch Jimmy and I watch Purdy, they do hit the same spots on the field because that's the design of the offense. I'm curious if there's extra layers to the offense well, for we, Kyle Shanahan. See, I think Brock Purdy being drafted last in the NFL draft benefited him in a lot of ways. On tape, there was a lot of Jimmy O'No throws, especially those last four games. Oh, yeah. But, we give him the benefit of doubt because he was drafted last. We don't harp on those plays because of where Brock Purdy was drafted. So that it's like and an because underdog. Because he kind of, it, that underdog yeah. Cinderella story is yeah, like, hey, yeah, it's yeah. Brock Purdy. It's all good. He's got the name. He's got the feel. It's a hell of a story. You see his parents crying. He beats Tom Brady. He threw a lot of Jimmy on no throws. And the vitriol towards Trey Lance is just, it's like, all right, let's 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 chill. So we overpraise Brock. And we over criticize Trey. You're it probably, feels like that. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I would agree. I would agree overall. I, I think missing, you know, from rookie to second year, you you take a big quantum leap forward in terms of your comprehension of the offense, your synergy with the playmakers around you. And I really worry that he's missing valuable time right now because of the arm injury. It really sucks for the guy because I was hoping he could build on what he did last year and then say, hey, roll it into this year and be better or at least understand the game a little more. And I, I think he's playing behind the eight ball this year. And it's I, 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 I think feel there's for a lot, him. I think there's a lot of pressure on Brock this year. Trey's like this. I think for Trey Lance coming into camp. I'm excited for the guy. For, for, Trey, for Trey Lance, for example. Beat out Sam Darnold. You may get an opportunity to start week one, week two. You know you're drafted number three overall. You got your guaranteed money already. If you go to a new spot, refresh, rejuvenate your career, these are good reps for you to showcase another team. For Brock... I think there is pressure on him coming back early, which is why he's trying to push for that. Because I would agree. I would agree. He's with saying that. to myself, I cannot risk me being the last pick of the NFL draft. And I know this is a great story, but dealing with the head coach that I have at Kyle Shanahan, it's a what have you done for me lately business. And I have to go in there. Not only do I have to take that job, I have to continue to perform at a high level because if I don't, not only is Trey going to take my job, then I'm going to cost myself money like Nick Mullins did. Remember Nick Mullins? Yes. He had. Every opportunity, this fan base was ready to hug Nick Mullins, welcome him with open arms once Jimmy got hurt because people was fatigued with Jimmy Garoppolo, and he had that Sunday night game against the Philadelphia Eagles where he got benched, and his NFL career is basically over. Now he's a career backup. Brock Purdy comes back early and struggles. You don't think people are going to say, hey, try Trey. You tried through the number three overall. Hey, Purdy's not ready yet. Purdy's not ready to go. And Purdy, in his mind, he's got to establish... Purdy has a chance. If he comes out and he comes back early and he balls out, he's going to be the franchise quarterback. Well, there's no doubt. There's no doubt I, about that. I think that. my biggest reservation regarding the Brock Purdy thing, and I, I mean this to my core, I did this with Kaepernick. I did this with Jimmy Garoppolo, right? It almost feels too good to be true, right? Like, it really does. And I've been let down so many times by the history of the position when it comes to the 49ers that, like, a guy has a 7, 8, 9, 10-week stretch that's incredible, and we feel infused – and I just I, I fall for the banana and the tailpipe, and it's too good to be true. I hope that's not the case with him, man. Because what we saw be it's one of the greatest stories in sports. Yeah. By the way, Julian uh, on Twitter sent me the A Rod home run. Oh, from 07. top of the ninth inning, two one pitch from Tyler Walker. And it's an absolute bomb. No, I, I the Brock Purdy stuff. I, but then again, it's on Shanahan to figure this out. Once and for all. Well, I think because, had- because here's what the other thing that's going to happen, Chasky. If both these quarterbacks struggle, we're going right back to the Kirk Cousins well, that, sweepstakes. I mean, that's, and I- you think we're going to be... What? You think we're going crazy now? These quarterbacks don't get things going. 
One of these guys. Hell, I how much patience will they have? Brock comes back and he's healthy. All right, and and, and it it's just doesn't look as good as it did last year for whatever reason. Around him isn't as good. Whatever. How much patience is everyone going to have? I, exactly. That's a great question. That's a great question. Because I know what will happen in the other direction. Let's say Brock's not ready to go, right? Let's say he's not ready to go. They start Darnold or Trey Lance. Our patience level is going to be very, very minimal for mistakes. Very minimal. But if the other thing happens where they, they get Brock back and he's fully healthy and he's out on the field, are we going to allow him the opportunity to get in sync with his guys? Because we barely allowed Jimmy Garoppolo to get ready last year and when he came off the off the injured list. And we certainly didn't allow it for Trey Lance, no. even though Trey Lance didn't play with George Kittle. No. If Trey Lance struggles to get this guy out of the game for Sam Darnold. Well, yeah. And that's another, that's the other caveat. You don't think Sam Darnold's stinking? Boy, if I could get a couple starts under Kyle Shanahan, I could rejuvenate my football career, and I could become the guy in San Francisco. That's a great point. <laughs> so, the whole quarterback thing, hey, we keep talking about quarterbacks, I go back to Kyle Shanahan. This is on you to figure this out. Don't you think they already have figured out, but the injury complicated things? Don't you think that they they believe it's Brock Purdy? Because that's the it's feeling not, I well, get. Well, John Lynch said it. He's a leader in the clubhouse, and I'm cool with that. Brock Purdy earned that right. Why hasn't Brock Kyle Purdy, come out and, and said it that He never does. Succinctly? He didn't do it because he didn't do it with Trey Lynch and Jimmy Garoppolo. Remember that? I. He never named a starter. Jimmy did, and that pissed him off even more because Jimmy was like, yeah, I'm starting. <laughs> But Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, in his mind, it was an open yeah, competition. Kyle never tells you. Hey, boss, me and Bonte, we got that morning slot. Yeah, I'm doing that. We're doing I'm doing that. the morning we got roast. It. And the boss is like, yeah, I don't know. I haven't decided on that. I was like, no, we got that slot. Yeah, that would That's be ours. hilarious. How do you think I got this producer job? I just walked into the bo boss's office and said, hey, I know Curly's leaving. I got you. I'll take that morning slot. I look behind the glass. I bought these guys burritos. I look behind the glass, and I'm staring at this food that I want to eat. And both of these guys are face first right. into burritos. And, I'm and, so jealous. And Lumman just popping on the mic, just lying. We had to go to bat for you. We had to, we had to like put ten on two to get you to be the producer of the show. Oh, I'm sure it was a quick. Trust, that was a very quick conversation. Me, hey, He's boss, we want we want Lumman. Oh, I know you guys want Lumman. I want him too. It was probably a lot like that. No, the boss said, "Give me two weeks to think about this." Is one. this a make or break? season just for the Niners in general like would this break our soul if we're going through right. this quarterback thing one more so, year after this maybe, like honestly but, but here's the thing a lot of people getting on me saying Bonte just admit it Trey was a mistake this is Graymon dream okay so if Trey was a mistake Wait, it's Graymon dream yeah, Graymon dream that's a great name if Trey Lance was a mistake <laughs> uh-huh then why are we not Raising our arms, looking at Kyle Shanahan, saying, "What's up, dude?" Because they think they found Purdy. So, so is that why? Because I'll use okay. this and as different because right. it's quarterback. Okay, but the way that I think people are justifying is that it, why? Well, I, when they whiffed on Reuben Foster, we ripped them. But then they found Fred Warner, right? And we were like, "Ah, who cares about Reuben Foster?" Right. And I, I think that's how the general sports fan is. Like, okay, you missed on Player right. X. But we found that guy. Okay. And I do think that that overrides it, and especially so, at that position. So I wonder, real quick, before we get to Dave Fleming at 8 o'clock, 888-957-9570, because we have really not talked much football since. I can't wait. I, and I, and did you Philadelphia, see the training camp dates were yeah, released? Yeah, they, they were released yesterday. Open practice, Wednesday, July 26th. Are you announcing what what practices you're going I'll to? I'll be, be at as many practices as I can get to. Uh, is that a, uh, that's they a report? Every practice. That's, okay. that's just what I'm telling no everybody pad. right now. No pads, pads, does not matter. I love when you have the yellow legal pad with the cargo shorts like and you're walking around pointing at people. And I got the notes. Oh, you're the best. All ready to go. And then I look at your notes and they're just chicken scratch. <laughs> well, it's, it's for me to read, not for <laughs> you. I know what I'm doing. It's like Molly Kiram show Mad Dog Russo's notes from first take. Oh, yeah? That's how my notes are. They're all over the place. It's unorganized chaos. But I love it. So I'll be at all these practices. I want to see what's happening. But, you know... If Trey Lance is a bust and Brock Purdy is a guy, do we all believe that? What do you if mean? If Brock Purdy is a guy right now, if they believe that Brock Purdy is a guy. I think he's the guy for right now, yes. Why I are they do. waiting on a contract extension? You you can't. because I mean, you can't. I know you can't do it right now, but we haven't even heard rumblings about it. Well, because you, you, you want him to play well enough to where the team succeeds, but not well enough to where he's breaking the bank as a quarterback. Right. Like, you see that Jalen Hurts contract? Pretty nice. I mean, no, it's it's incredible, right? right. Like that's the cost of doing right. business for these quarterbacks now. And I'm going to be real; I get sticker shock unless right. it's one of the uh, unless it's one of the top five, six, seven quarterbacks. Right. And and look, a lot of people are trying to make race about why I like Trey Lance. No, you just I like, like I, Trey Lance. I, I'll say this again. 
I don't know how many times i got to repeat myself. I don't give a damn who the quarterback is this year. I want a Super Bowl, and I'm tired of talking about the quarterback spot. I want my guy. Kansas City has their guy. Philadelphia has their guy. Yeah. Dallas right now has their guy. They invested in Dak, you know, even though it doesn't feel like it's long term. The Niners, when they made this selection for Trey Lance, they said, finally, we got a guy. Develop him. And all of a sudden, in year three, we're just going to, ha, let's let's kick him to the curb. Okay. So if he's not the guy, Brock Purdy better be the guy. Because if Brock Purdy comes back slow and struggle, you ask the question, how patient are fans going to be? I'll tell you what. Me, Bonte Hill will not be patient. How patient were Niner fans with Jimmy Garoppolo at the beginning of 2019? Not patient at all. <laughs> that, he was coming off the ACL injury. Not patient at all. And I think week the first half of week one against Tampa Bay, how frustrated were Niner fans? A, a lot of – very frustrated. Very frustrated. Did he throw two picks in that game? The Tampa game? Yeah. Well, he threw the pick six. <laughs> the pick six. He threw the other one. Shanahan yelled at him. You know, against Cincinnati, remember he threw the pop up yes. and it was like five bangles over there and he <laughs> yes. picked it off. And the next drive, Kyle Shanahan basically said, Kyle Shanahan basically said, we're going to run the ball down the field. Uh, and take the ball out of your hands. Uh, so if Trey's not the guy, fine. But if Trey's not the guy, God. Purdy better be the guy. And it's not even on Purdy. My my vitriol. That's a lot of my, pressure on listen, Purdy. It's man. a lot of pressure on Purdy. Man, but you know a what? Lot of pressure. Forget that. No, 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 no. I want Purdy to do well. Again, we're avoiding the obvious here. Why are so many people scared to come down Kyle Shanahan's road for the quarterback position? Again, this is on Shanahan. Shanahan picked Trey Lance. He wasn't forced to pick Trey Lance. He was. He had the autonomy to pick whatever quarterback he wanted. He stuck with Trey Lance. He didn't want him. The guy wanted Kirk Cousins. The guy talked up Nick Mullins. At times, he talked up Jimmy Garoppolo. It was obviously there was a disconnect with Jimmy Garoppolo and Kyle Shanahan. That was obvious. Okay, so if Purdy, Purdy comes back and struggles, that's not on Purdy to me. Well, are they winning? Are they winning? That's the, I think that's, that's on Shanahan. Yeah, like it's a Shanahan problem. Let's with say the they go eleven spot. and six, right? Okay, it's so weird saying that the seventeen game. They go eleven and six, but like the quarterback position does it looks a little rocky, a little shaky, but they're still winning games. I think the majority of people are going to say Brock's our guy, right? But he is. I've said that Brock's the leader of the clubhouse. But there will be a time when someone throws an interception in a playoff game, and people are going to look over at the sidelines. Good. Fans are. That's what fans I, do. I don't know how many times I got to say right now, if Brock was healthy, he'd be your starter week one. And I have no problem with that. He earned that with the way he played last year. But boy, if Brock comes out and struggles, are we really going to go back to Trey Lance? And then if he struggles, again, <laughs> Sam Darnold. I'm looking at Kyle Shanahan saying, this is on you. You have to figure it out. 